Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pots, Pans, and Priscilla. We are going to continue with our fall recipes. Even though it's still in the 80s here in Florida, I can appreciate that you all are enjoying your fall weather, so I want to give you some recipes to help you with that. Today we are gonna make corn chowder. So let's get cooking. For our ingredients, we have milk, bacon, butter, garlic, onion, olive oil, salt, celery, red potatoes, green onion, cheddar cheese, chicken stock, low sodium, white pepper, flour, and of course our corn. We're just gonna get these red potatoes cut up there's really no rhyme or reason why, how. Um, I just wanna make them smaller chunks because it's the corn chowder soup, it's not potato soup. Next up is our celery. You wanna use about three stalks of celery. Fun fact, not a fan of celery. Like, don't like it at all. You'll never see me eating like celery with peanut butter, but it goes well in soups. So I can handle it in soups, just not raw celery, I guess you would say. All right, for my veteran Pots, Pans, and Priscilla people, do you know why I'm wearing these? You probably know which ingredient comes up next. One yellow onion, this medium size, and these are my onion goggles. I've tried every trick in the book. You guys have listed them all. It doesn't work for me. These work. <laughs> and I love them and I'm so appreciative to have them in my life. So anytime I cook onions, I'm wearing them. We've got all of our vegetables, potatoes, everything's cut up. Now we need to add one tablespoon of butter and you're just gonna eyeball the olive oil. You guys know, I am not a recipe follower, I'm sorry. I kinda look at recipes, get an idea of what I want, and then make it my own. And that's the joy of cooking. So make it your own. If you don't like something, take it out. If you like something more, put it in. It's all up to you. But we are gonna get this olive oil and butter in our pan, and then we will add these ingredients. Another fun fact for you guys, you're probably like, why'd she use butter and oil? The oil actually helps the butter um, from burning. So, a little fun fact for you. You guys will probably notice we have to little, make a little pot change. I never do that right. It's like, I can't get it right. I wanted to use one of my new pots so bad, but it's just not gonna fit. So we're gonna go back to our old trusty soup pot that I normally make soup in and we'll be good to go. So let's get our bacon in our other frying pan and we will get that cooked while we're waiting on the potatoes and vegetables to cook. While we're waiting on that magic to happen over on the stove top, we are gonna go ahead and cut our garlic cloves and our green onion, which is just gonna be used for garnish, but it adds a great flavor to the top of your soup. For all my bacon lovers out there, let's have some fun. And comment down below, what is your favorite kind of bacon? Do you like it crispy? I'm a floppy bacon person. Asa typically likes his more crispy, but when we're eating bacon together, he'll cook mine floppy, and sometimes he'll eat that as well. So comment down below, let me know. Don't forget, if you just wanna leave the bacon out of this, then you have a vegetarian corn chowder. So, we're thinking about you vegetarians, we're thinking about you. Let's go ahead and add this flour. This is two tablespoons of flour to our potatoes and vegetables. I lied, I'm so sorry. I lied to you guys. Vegetarians, you would also need to switch the chicken broth out for some vegetarian broth, like vegetable broth. I forgot to mention, you are putting in two cups of chicken broth, and you're just gonna let that simmer for a little bit until the potatoes get soft. We did take our bacon off. Always make extra so you can have a little snack while you're still cooking. 
I wish y'all could be here right now and smell this kitchen. It smells so good between the bacon and the chowder. Mm. Okay, we're gonna add our two cups of milk and our two cups of corn. We are also gonna add our bacon. We're gonna add our spices, which are salt, just a little bit, you don't need a lot, and our white pepper, and then the green onion. The cheese is last. I just wanna reiterate, you, the salt and pepper, you're just gonna season to taste. Um, with the pepper though, remember white pepper is stronger, so don't go overboard. You know, you can add a little and then if you feel like you need more, just put it on the table. So don't want you to go overboard. And then I use low sodium chicken broth. So if you use the full throttle stuff, don't use as much salt guys. Salt is not that good for you. Don't be using all that salt. So you're gonna let it simmer for about five to eight minutes. You just wanna make sure it gets that thick consistency because you added that milk. Um, don't let it get too, you don't want it to be too liquidy and thin. All right guys, we have real life happening right now in front of your eyes. I have to leave and I have to go get Abigail. My soup is not quite finished, but I gave my cameraman, AKA Asa, AKA my husband, all the rundown. He can handle it, he's got it. Comment down below, let Asa know you've got his back. If you haven't done so already, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and share this video. You never know who needs corn chowder in their life. She told me it needed to be thick. It's not quite thick yet. Thick with three C's, that was her instructions. Okay, we got that last pad of butter that we're gonna throw in there because it is, it's ready to go, it's thick. It's like a tablespoon of butter or something like that. I think that's what she said. It's the moment of truth, guys. The moment we've all been waiting for. It's the moment I've been waiting for, I know that. Ooh. It's like it was cooked on the surface of the sun. Oh but it's good. I burnt my mouth. That is tasty. Almost as tasty as this B-roll.